Good evening and salutations, my GH fans. Let's uh, let's talk about Michael and Sasha for a minute because oh my goodness, this was like the most painful breakup I've seen in this show, and I don't mean painful like it was sad or anything. I mean like it just it just seemed like it just wasn't gonna end. But the one thing that I can actually sit there and say is that he finally manned up somewhat. Let's be honest. If Sasha didn't catch them in the act of about to kiss or whatever, I don't know if it actually would have been brought up. I, I really don't. Um, brought up. But yeah, Sasha walks in and she's like, so, um, what's... What was what's going on? So they pretty much have an hour long breakup. And, you know, Michael and Sasha kind of realized that the reason why they were going so slow is because the feelings weren't there. Like it was the first time. Sure, I think that's part of it. Um... I just felt like Michael just couldn't really make up his mind of what he wanted. But, um, I think, I felt like at least that was my interpretation of it. Like, he wanted Sasha, but he also wanted Willow. And, y you know what, at this point, they, they finally decided to just kind of just end it. Which is great, because that's one less headache that I gotta sit there and think about. Um... And it's, 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 it's almost kind of funny because, you know, Sasha was like, you know, at least we went down swinging. I was like, well, did, did y'all really go down swinging or was it just like <laughs> nobody knew what they wanted and it just kind of just came to a head because, well, it, it just had to. Whatever. Now outside... Willow looked like she's about to start breaking down, you know, she's about to start breaking down crying. And, um, Brooklyn's like, yo, what's going on? Yo, let's, let's chat. Now, Willow is another person who doesn't know what she wants. She talks about Michael and, you know, their time together. And then she talks about Chase and how they're trying again. And, like... I have to tell you, I'm going to be honest, she didn't even, she basically was like, she didn't, in a lot of ways, she was like, she didn't know what she wanted. That, that was it. And I have to tell you the truth, nothing got resolved in that conversation because Valentine walked in. Um, but yeah, she doesn't know what she wants, and now, you know, she walks out the room like she's about to start tearing up and everything like that, and I was like, why? Don't you have a man that actually wants to get back together with you? Unless you want to be with him instead. See, <laughs> for me, I can't even feel bad for her. I really can't because she doesn't know what she wants. And in the end, she's just going to wind up hurting someone. Is, she's going to wind up hurting someone's feelings. And she's going to wind up being hurt in the process. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, with that being said, um, Valentine does kind of interrupt. And Brooklyn falls. Valentine freaks out and Valentine's like, yo, we got to go to the hospital because I am not leaving your side. The first thing when he knocked on the door and Brooklyn was like, yeah, I can't talk right now. We got to, we got to reschedule this. And Valentine put his foot in the door like, no, mm -mm. we got to do this now. Now, the reason why he came there so urgent is because he had a conversation with Carly. And Carly pretty much just kind of put him on notice like, yo, listen, Cyrus is dangerous. He tends to target families. And, um... I'm just giving you a heads up. And that's when Valentine kind of went down there to talk to um, Brooklyn after texting her and her not answering because, well, she's Brooklyn. Now, yesterday, I was annoyed at Brooklyn. And I'm still annoyed at Brooklyn. But I didn't really sit there and see it until I started reading some of the comments and stuff like that. And then it, it made me really think. And I was like, you know what? At the very least, at least Brooklyn isn't using 
a re you know her real child like an actual real child to try to get you know control of el kim you know there's just some crazy scheme that she's coming out with because she's brooklyn and that's what she does and you know honestly to tell you the truth as sad as that sounds i can live with that i can here's the thing i can live with the the lying and the scheming and stuff like that and and what she's doing it's when she puts an actual real child there that I feel like it was just crossing the line. But this part is, at, at this point, it's just powerful to call from Brooklyn. But, uh, yeah, good luck when you gotta go to the hospital because, um, Valentine is not letting you out his sight. And to be honest, I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna laugh if the thing, like her little fake belly thing just fell on the floor. Because she was having a conversation with her mother... And she ended it real quick because she realized it was silence. So she went downstairs to check. And I'm sitting there thinking, did you secure that little fake baby thing by the time you got downstairs? Because if you didn't, well, <laughs> you're going to be screwed. Um, yeah. Now, let's talk about Alexis for a minute. Alexis is talking to Sam and she's like, you know, she wants to go out and just have something to eat and just... Fancy food and you know because she's not going to be able to do it because she's going to jail because Somehow in her her mind that actually made sense to her. So while she's doing that she's talking to Sam this Now correct me if I'm wrong because I've never gotten anything as much as a um, parking ticket Okay, but I, I didn't know that there was such things and I'm not laughing I just never know I never knew there was such things as, as um jail coaches because that's literally what she was she came in there she was like yo listen we got we have to cut the jokes sarcasm and um you know I'm gonna have to kind of teach you the ins and outs about kind of you know surviving in jail and I'm just sitting there thinking I'm like I have to look this up but is that like, is that an actual real thing? Like, just, like, you get, like, jail coaches to kind of, like, tell you, you know, like, kind of prepare you for jail? Because I didn't think that was a thing. But apparently that's a thing. So that's, um, that's new to me. Anyway, she came in there. And Sam was a little freaked out at, at first. Well, she wasn't freaked out. She was, she was freaked out, but she was more freaked out for her mother. Because she was like, yo, listen, Let's not have it be all doom and gloom. Like, you know, I went to jail before. It's not, you know, like that 24-7. But to be honest, I mean, and, and, and Sam can take care of herself, okay, if it, if it really comes down to it. Alexis, on the other hand, yeah, I don't, I don't think that's possible. And then, also, she has that whole, um, I forgot what it's called, like when your bones are like brittle and stuff like that, they keep having it in the commercials and for some odd reason I'm just can't think of it. I think it's called osteoporosis I think. Um, and I could be wrong but I think that's what it's called. So that's something else. But pretty much she just was there to make sure that um, you know Alexis is going to be good. Now when they were outside you know she was sitting there talking about cigarettes and stuff like that as far as being commodities and like whatever. And um you know, Alexis, like, you know, how'd you get into this line of work? And I'm like, Alexis, do you, do you really want to find out how she got into this line of work? But she pretty much was like, yo, listen, I shot my husband in the chest three times. I was like, Jesus Christ. Wow. But then she said why she did it. And I was like, I am all for that. You should have shot him in the head. Make sure he was gone. Yes. Yes, I am all for that. Um, now while that's going on, Cyrus pays a visit to Laura. Now, Cyrus and Nicholas are kind of just going at it a little bit. You know, Nicholas like, you know, I'm a Cassidine and, you know, like, I, I don't play that pretty much. And, you know, he's not there talking junk or whatever and they're going back and forth. And, you know, Cyrus is like, okay, all right, this is cute what you're doing right now, but Here's the thing. He threatens him. Well, I mean, this is after he threatens him. He's like, well, you know, Alexis is, is going to jail. And, I mean, all sorts of things can happen when you're in jail. 
Now she can have a smooth three years. Or she can have a very um, traumatic three years. If I don't find my mother, I guess we'll, I guess we'll roll the dice and just see what happens pretty much. And he walks out and Laura's like, don't, don't fall for it. Don't, you know, don't play his game. Laura, what, what choice does he have at this point? Because Alexis is going to jail. Okay. And there is a good chance that, you know, well, there's more than a good chance. Cyrus is going to get his people on her. If he doesn't find back, if Nicholas doesn't play his game. So sit there and say, well, you know, don't, don't play his game. Don't do this. Don't do that. I'm like, if the roles were reversed. Wouldn't you, I, I was almost just like, Laura, you are making zero sense right now. I get where she's coming from because she's like, listen, you know, he gets his mother or hell can break loose. But at this point, Nicholas is like, yo, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about her. And he, was, he was also mad at Laura for the fact that like, yo... Uh, what are you doing? Like, if you had the power to get back his mother, you should do so because it's not just me. It's me. It's Ava. I think she said that, but the point was, was like, because Laura's like, you know, he can target anyone. He can still target anyone. Laura, have you? Okay. So anyway, he walks off and he leaves. Kevin comes back and, you know... <laughs> Laura's like, yeah, he pretty much threatened me. Well, he threatened Alexis and stuff like that. And I think that's when Kevin is about to sit there and tell her what happened at the gallery. Now, Chase comes there. And I was sitting there thinking, you know, did you really need to be in this episode? Like, did, did you need to be in this episode? They couldn't just have a plane cop come in here and do that? Okay, sure, whatever. So... You know, once again, Ava finds the hand. She thinks it's Ryan. Kevin's like, don't be so sure because, well, you do have enemies. And so does he. Let's just not, you know, look at him where the real person can actually be lurking now. I'm sitting there thinking it could be um, Heather Weber. I don't know why, but that name just comes up to me. Um... And with that being said, you know, Nicholas comes in and Nicholas, I think they kind of start to exchange stories or whatever. Like, um, yeah, they, they, they start to exchange stories. And I don't remember exactly who went first, but they were exchanging stories. Now, I think the last scene, and I, I really do sit there and emphasize the word think because I'm not too sure. I felt like there was more people, but... There really wasn't that much stuff that was going on. Um, since Michael, Sasha, Brooklyn, and Willow were all kind of in the same house. Yeah, that covers them. So I think the last thing I'm going to sit there and talk about pretty much is Carly and Cyrus. So Carly wants to see Jason. She calls up Diane. And Cyrus is like, so I, I can I can help you out with that little thing. I I. I'm here. I, I can help you. Hello? So, Carly turns around, and once again, she's like, I don't need your help. I'm good. Yada, yada, yada. And, um... Oh. No. I mean, there was this little thing with Carly and, um... Valentine, but I'm not gonna lie. It didn't really go anywhere. They just talked about Jason and... How they couldn't tie back the evidence to um, Lattice and everything like that. She started freaking out. And, you know, Valentine was like, listen, you need to use that fear as a weapon, you know. So, yeah, I, I knew there was something else. But pretty much, Carly's like, I don't need your help. I'm good, whatever. And Cyrus is like, listen, um, you're not even really relevant anymore, pretty much. Like, your husband's dead. Jason's locked up. I, you pose nothing to me at this point. And pretty much the reason why he just kind of just leaves is because 
at this point, he figures he has um, Nicholas to do his um, dirty work for him. So he's like, you know what? Eh, what else? He just walks off. And Carly, you know, has this big sigh of relief. You know? Just to let you know exactly how dangerous Cyrus is. Now, you know, Cyrus and set his threats... And I think they, they, I think people are taking them seriously. But if they're not taking them seriously, I think Cyrus needs to find a way to get somebody shot again. Listen, I'm not, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want anyone to get shot. I just think that, you know, an example needs to be made. Because when, when examples aren't made, people tend to get all overconfident and think that Cyrus is just a joke. I mean, hell... It was one point, and it wasn't meant to be funny, but there was one point when Cyrus yelled and Laura, like, screamed a little bit, like, yes, listen, Cyrus may talk to you in a very calm manner and be kind of, like, you know, a little bit threatening and stuff like that, but when he raises his voice, he's not joking. You people seem to think that he's joking. And when he raised his voice and <laughs> Laura got, Laura yelled, I did kind of laugh a little bit, but I was like, you know, this guy could be unhinged at any point in time. He has money, power, and resources to do damn near whatever he wants. He's gotten jobs done, or nearly done, inside of jail. And yet you people still are, are, are not taking him seriously. But whatever, okay, cool. Anyway, with that being said, I think that's about it. If I left anything out, please write it down in the comment section below. With that being said, I'm pretty sure I said that twice. Have a good day, have a good night, be safe, um... Thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next video.